Welcome to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are very fortunate to have this guest on here. Former high stakes poker pro who played with some of the legends of poker, and he was one of the legends himself in the world of seven card stud, but has become one of the top, if not the top, television producers out there producing shows, starting with poker superstars back in the early 2000s to high stakes poker, poker after dark, the WSOP since 2011, and has been recently named the president of Poker Go, 2018 Poker Hall of Famer and good friend, Maury Escandani. Maury, thanks for joining us here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show, my friend. My pleasure, my friend, how are you? I'm very, very well. How's your golf game this so far? Better than yours. I know you're buried in the snow there. So <laughs> <laughs> we've it's been warm. It's been warm. So we're we're hanging in there. But uh, yeah, definitely we have to get back out there after this pandemic. Uh, but uh, so excited to have you on the show. Obviously, congratulations on being named the president of Poker Go. I know you're running the ship anyway. Uh, but uh, to have the title now and and really kind of start the direction and change the direction and rebrand poker go we'll get we'll get to that topics and we'll get to all of that uh, because i know a lot of people will be very excited to understand uh what poker go is going to uh become for the future and and obviously a lot of people are um subscribers um but i want to go back to the old days of when you were playing in some of these big games with doyle and chip and and, and everybody Talk a little bit about it. How, how did you come to Las Vegas and how did you get involved in the world of poker? Well, let's take it back that how I even got involved in the world of poker but it was purely accidental. So I was never planning to be a professional mm. poker player. I was never planning to be a part of the poker world. The whole uh, future for me when I was uh, in college had a totally different direction and it got um, basically uh, derailed from where it was going because of revolutions and uh, uh, political situations uh, from the old home country that I was born in and uh, uh, so pivoting to poker it was uh, again uh, e even then, it wasn't exactly what I had ever thought of uh, being my future profession. It was truly, purely accidental. I was invited to play in some games, and I fell in love with the game, with the new game. I knew the old poker game that you know I'd learned when I was seven years old, which was basically a five-card draw, short deck. That everybody's talking about short deck now. It's something new. No, it's not. <laughs> we didn't have uh, uh, we had a 32 card deck that we played with and uh, again it was all five card draw the Texas Hold'em part of it uh, which actually I learned five card stud first and seven card stud and Texas Hold'em that was all new and fascinating to me and um, I got good at it I, I don't know how and why I can't explain it but um, I, I was playing in Vancouver, Washington, and quickly became one of the players uh, that would just wouldn't lose. Uh, I would go for uh, a whole month, maybe having two losing days. Wow. Many people played for recreation. They, they didn't take the game seriously. They didn't try to make, make it like an income <laughs> part of their life. So it was a little bit easier to get in the middle of that crowd and you know just uh, gear down and win money and uh, of course a lot easier right now i think i'm on the right side of the equation being behind <laughs> it cameras <laughs> players right 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 so, you know, you, you were, like you said, you, you were very um, proficient in stud. You were known as a really, really good stud player. Um, who were some of the best stud players back then that you played uh, with and, and really kind of uh, competed head to head and, and also really learned some stuff with too? Well, there were many, uh, but, but my poker career and professional uh, poker uh the days started with Texas Hold'em. I was oh. playing Limit, Limit, Texas Hold'em. 
And uh, I started from that. And uh, seven cards that came in because uh, it just took over. It, it, like there was all, all of a sudden period that all the big games were seven card stud games. Right. And I, I pivoted to stud and uh, played it every day for maybe, um, I want to say 15 years. And I mean wow. every day. I mean, there were yeah. no weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there were f- quite a few great stud players. Your opening statement was saying he's one of the blah, blah, television producers. Yeah, there's only maybe four of them in the world. It's easy to be one of the... <laughs> <laughs> But there were quite a few seven card stud players. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to forget some names, but the people that I played with every day and learned things from and uh, uh, saw their creativity, you know, take over, not just by just the math of the game, but what to do with people and uh, how to... Uh, um, how to take advantage of the psyche of, uh, you know, the psychology that goes with the game. Uh, I would immediately go to Danny Robinson. Uh, Mm. I really enjoyed playing with Danny. He's not with us anymore. And uh, uh, players like Jeff Sandow, Rod Parvey, David Hayden, uh, who all did I play with? Uh, I mean, there, there's so many. I, I really am going to, of course, Chip Reese was you know, considered to be one of the best stud players in the world. I didn't play that many um, days with Chip. I might have you know, played uh, seven card stud with Chip. Uh, I think I played in a tournament with him. Cash games, not that many because he immediately, uh, like we played a little bit and then he was off going and playing like uh, nosebleed games, 1,500, 3,000, whatever. Right. Uh, but I did play some, believe it or not, some 1,500, 3,000 game with Larry Flint, who's not with us anymore either. Yeah. So uh, his game in California was uh, uh, filled with action. And of course, uh, later towards when I was exiting, he was entering, it was Phil Ivey. I kept uh-huh. hearing is yeah. coming from uh, Atlantic City. His name is Phil Ivey. He's a great stud player. And uh, he came in, we played, uh, you know, I, I would, I'm going to say maybe a year on and off. And uh, uh, I, I could just see he's going to be obviously one of the best, you know, like you could just sense it, you know, stud yeah. gives you a more opportunity of uh, buying free streets, uh, making people think, disguising your hand, uh, make people, making people think, you know, go in different one direction and will you when you're some, somewhere else. Right, <laughs> so right, right. It, it really is a fascinating game. Uh, but of course, uh, it was never played as any kind of a pot limit or no limit game. If they had, I didn't know. I mean, they, I didn't know of any any seven card stud game that was pot limit, no limit. It wouldn't be a good game playing it that way. So all the stud games, all the seven card stud games were limit games. Yep. And yeah, there was, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say there were probably a couple of hundred really good seven card stud players when I was yep. playing. I remember, so being, starting out on the East Coast, stud was the big game. And uh, started playing myself in the 90s at Foxwoods. And I had to learn. And where do you learn? You go to Doyle's book. And who wrote the chapter on seven studs? Chip Reese. I remember copy, photocopying the section and highlighting. I still have it somewhere. And it was highlighted in three different colors. And I still remember reading about Chip over and over and over, making index card notes. And so I, I, I just know Chip because of that. He, he's a legend in my mind because of the stud scenario exactly that way. And, and stud was my game starting out too. My friend used to take me to the casino with him and he would play this game and he would explain it on the way down. I never understood. And he, he said, there's a lot of community cards and you only have two cards yourself. And he called it Texas Hold'em. I was like, what is Texas Hold'em? What are you talking about? You know, back in the 90s, and it's funny. It's amazing how uh, the game has evolved, obviously, since. Um, I'll tell you one thing, uh, one thing that um, I, I should turn off my phone. I apologize. <laughs> the one thing um, about Chip that I miss so much, he had such a raw talent of finding finding what was uh, not so visible in games, even if it was introduced to him as a new game, it would just take him like a few sessions to come up with his own way of 
seen things in the game that it didn't come naturally to many. Uh, I know questions are asked like these days from the players, who would you want from the old days to come and, you know, like uh, who, who would you want to play with or, or who, who do you wish that if you could uh, uh, bring back from the old days to new days and have them see them playing. And many people would say Stewie, you know, Stewie Unger or, right. you know, I would love to see what Chip would do with the new world of GPOs and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. that's going on. He might, I mean, if he just concede to it, I mean, if that was the way to play, he would he would know and he would say, yeah, this is what we need to do. We need to bring in some computer programmers and have them write some uh, codes and, and right. output them for us and go from there. Or he would say, Something like, okay, let them do what they're doing, and this is the, this is how you counteract it. How counterbalance? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that part of him, uh, you know, like every time I had a conversation with him, that was always what I took from him, and I would just, you know, like just see the calm and never tilting, you know, player uh, in him that was really inspiring. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I, that, that would be something that we are going to miss. I wish Poker World is going to miss to see what Chip Reese would have done. Right. The new crowd. Right, right. And obviously the the Poker World, maybe maybe even now this generation didn't see it, but we obviously saw him with that epic heads up battle uh, during the Poker Players Championship with uh, um, Andy Block. Uh, so Block, some yeah. people did see the kind of uh, the the genius of him. And obviously it's been the, the, the award is now named after him. And so he definitely is one of those players that, uh, you know, you 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 hear the stories of and, and all justifiably so. Um, you know, sometimes one of the things that I pride myself on doing a lot of the media stuff is, is that by doing this media stuff, I, I really feel like I can interject some insights because I play as well currently. And you becoming a uh, executive producer in the world of poker for so many of these shows, I really feel like you have taken it to that next level because you were so integral and, and part of that world that you can kind of bring that out onto the screen. Do you feel like playing in the world that you did for so many decades has really helped you as you transitioned over to your current role in the world of poker? No question. I mean, look, um, this wasn't a game it's not exactly, I mean, it's been a game that's been around for a couple thousand years, but it's not right. exactly a mainstream sports game that you could go out there and just find people who understand it in a deeper level. Right. You know, many people, when you talk poker, they either think of video poker or they, they think of the five card draw and most likely something they've seen in the movies where the guy's got, uh, you know, ace hidden in his sleeve or, you know, like uh, it, it was, it, it wasn't exactly that like, the kind of poker that we played uh, was like a total different science, different game. When you explain to people, I mean, I've had so many conversations in my old days that tell, when I tell people it was game of skill and you could actually win at it, they just laugh like this, this, okay, this guy's crazy. Let's move on. What do you mean? You play poker for a living? Ha ha ha. Yes, <laughs> that's true. They couldn't even see how that could be. Uh, so to bring some that unknown, and I want to say it, it was unknown to general public, to television. It did take a poker player. You couldn't, you couldn't just bring someone who wasn't familiar with this uh, to tell the story of the game or bring it to life. It would have been <clears throat> like bringing some uh, outside advisor that didn't understand poker to do uh, what happened in, in, the, in the latest James Bond movie. Right, example, right. You know, the... Right. Casino Royale. I mean, that hand wasn't put together by a poker player. That hand was put together with someone who just read the hierarchy of the hands and uh, right. put in five hands and they were in order. It wasn't right. like one guy had uh, whatever flush and the next to him had the uh, full house and the next to him had the bigger full house and the last one had a four of a kind. And then, right. you know, so it was, it was just a joke. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, you can get away with it in a James Bond movie, but if you're bringing poker to television, 
the actual poker games, cash games, tournaments. It has to be done right. And right. Uh, it did take poker players. And I think um, it, it shows in, in all the poker shows that are out there, like somebody like Mike Sexton coming in for World Poker Tour. That was a huge help. Sure, you know, sure. He would, he would definitely uh, design it correctly and, uh, you know, advise them correctly how to film it, how to tell the story. So right. I even remember one of the shows, uh, it was a split production. The very first poker show I was involved with, Poker Superstars, it was actually right. a split production where we did half the shows with one producer in Los Angeles and the other half the shows with another producer in Connecticut. And the reason for that was, what if one of the producers gets sick or gets hit with a bus? Let's not, I mean, really dumb reason, don't get me. <laughs> and now, now you would, I mean, I understand it was like, what a joke. I mean, everyone has their own style of producing these things. And we were like having them tell the stories their way. It was, it was, I was flying back and forth. And I remember going into Connecticut and I was mostly in LA and with the producer that I was working with in LA, new gambling. Well, I mean, he was, he loved to play blackjack and all that. This other producer in Connecticut had no idea about gambling, poker or anything. So I remember going over and saying, okay, let's watch the first show. And I'm trying to help, you know, with the edit. And the, the first hand that they picked, the button was on two seat. In the middle of the hand, the button was in five seat, seat five. I said, well, how did that happen? He said, what? I said, the button moved. I mean, you cut the hands really weird. I mean, I yeah. know we didn't have a shot of somebody's face. You, you're trying to bring in, you know, from and stitch it together, but the button can't go from two to five in the middle of a hand. He goes, oh, only the poker players will notice that. Nobody <laughs> <does>. <laughs> so I just, you know, some of the challenges. I'm, I'm, that, that's I'm, like that's like watching the Super Bowl and like highlights of the Super Bowl and like Tom Brady's on the thirty yard line. Then all of a sudden he's on the ten. Like just just yeah. instantly, you know, I mean, like what just happened? How did that happen? Well, I just kind of up of his face, so I went and grabbed something from uh, hand five, <laughs> which was. But anyway, it was yeah. it was uh, yeah. So the television part of it. You learn and, you know, you work in with the producers, work in which I had, a, uh, you know, I, I was lucky to work with many and, and then get surrounded by uh, so many intelligent, I mean, super, super smart people that are still with us and help with poker shows. Right. Really to a different level. It's, it's never, ever fair. And I should never, ever, I will never, ever admit to, to for this to be anywhere near a one man operation. It's not even close. I mean, seriously, from day one, the, the kind of help I got, uh, I, I'm just going to say any professional poker player that put themselves, if they put themselves in my shoes, which I happen to be in accidentally, would be exactly in the same place I am today. <laughs> so right. it wasn't, it wasn't like, I didn't know television. I didn't know uh, uh, editing and edit, you know, like I didn't know any of that. I knew poker and with the help of many, uh, a lot of shows got created. Well, I, I think you're being a little bit humble in the sense of that you maybe not didn't know it early, but you sure picked it up and really have run with that ball. And I I've mean, seen your team. It's unbelievable how incredible your team I, is behind I you. know it sounds like I'm being humble, but I mean, seriously, honestly, I'm not. I am <laughs> telling absolutely how it came down any professional poker player and i couldn't get them break away i couldn't get any top pro break away and come in and you know like run with me um it it, it was you know i mean you know how it is if you're a poker player you have you control your own time your own life your own everything you're just you just free and free spirited you know kind of right and what a life is that if you're a yeah. winning poker player it really is a great life how yeah. do you separate someone from that? Uh, maybe my biggest and, and and my biggest fault turned out to be my biggest win because I couldn't say no. And when I was asked, "Hey, help me with uh, what do you think about this whole cam? You know, let's let's put this together. Let's put a table together. Okay, let's do it. Let's let's do this. Let's do it. You know, like uh, so. I got dragged into something that I enjoy a lot." obviously right now. And, um, but again, lucky to be surrounded by all the right people. 
Right. And, and poker superstars, like you talked about, for people who don't remember, again, I remember it very well. I, I remember watching all the episodes, uh, the Morongo Casino in Southern California, and, you know, just watching all the players from Doyle to Barry Greenstein, uh, TJ. I mean, there are so many players back then that everyone wanted to watch. How did that kind of transition over to the poker after darks and the high stakes pokers? Um, how, how did you kind of transition over to those shows? Poker superstars happened uh, by, by uh, just a virtue of uh, Henry Ornstein, uh, who was a really dear friend, still is. Uh, he's almost 96 now, still playing seven cards a couple times a week, just uh, for people to know. And, and for people who don't know that name, he is the gentleman who invented the whole cam and was inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame in 2008 because of it. So we owe a lot to that, that to creation, obviously, uh, because we can obviously see people's whole cards and that's modern television now. He's the one that proved me wrong, and that's another lucky thing. You know, when he told me, hey, would poker players show their whole cards? I said, no, he proved no me way. wrong. No way. Right, right. <laughs> no way. Oh, no. Yeah, no no one's going to show them. <laughs> show the whole cards. I'm like, this is a livelihood. Now I'm going to show yeah. how I'm playing? Yeah, sure, Henry. I try it. And he yeah. tried it. He was, you know, luckily, lucky for me, he was stubborn enough, to, you know, to put his money and time behind it and drag me into it. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, I mean, that's... Um, Another example of me being surrounded by all the right people. Uh, so poker superstars really came to being unrelated to anything that was happening in online poker. So yeah. online was coming along. I mean, I remember I, I, I remember quite a few sites that are not even existing anymore. It's sure, to, sure. Yeah, it's up, coming in and trying to uh, uh, get the online poker rolling. And um, but poker superstars was just him saying that poker has a chance on TV if it is done right. So that's what why we went, you know, like that way. And it, it started at Fox and, and, and the main Fox. It wasn't even Fox Sports. It was actually right. in the, uh, the mothership. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was working with Eric Drake, who uh, I'm, I, I'm sure you know him. Yeah. And uh, the tournament director of World Series of Poker for 17 years. So the Brought creator of the satellite who right. uh, I actually interviewed for my recent book, Poker Satellite Success. So, yeah. Uh -huh. So if you were if I was going to find somebody to advise me on how to put poker tournaments together on TV, nobody was going to be better than Eric. Yeah. And we, him and I were good friends, both uh, seven car stud players, both, you know, so. Uh, Eric came on board and we brought in uh, a few shows to television together, one of them starting with, with uh, 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 Poker Superstars, which was a very quick structure. And the whole idea of Poker Superstars was introduce the game to the general public. Nobody understood what Texas Hold'em was. When you play Poker Superstars, if you ever go uh, find it on, online and watch it, every other hand is all in. So what happens when somebody's all in? You get to see the flop, turn, river, flop, right. turn, river, flop, turn, river. Everybody understood the game after, you know, watching Poker Superstars, how it is. There's a bet before, right. and then, then flop, turn, river. And, um, you know, people enjoyed it. It was, we had the right characters again in it. And um, that turned into other shows because while I was doing Poker Superstars, I don't remember what show, it was in Union Plaza believe it or not, they asked me if I could help, you know, like with that show. And next thing I know, I was helping another company putting a poker show together and then just going in and consulting and then into some bigger, bigger and bigger shows. And uh, at some point, you know, the conversation with high stakes poker came along with uh, game show network and the poker after dark came along with uh, the full tilt poker, uh, trying to like, you know, asking us to do something that would put them on TV. So um, it started out with the idea of let's change poker from with whole cards to go on TV, then got fueled heavily by all the online poker sites. Right. They right. would just uh, go into network and say, OK, you put a show in there and I'll be buying all the commercial units that you can sell. So it was right. an easy, uh, you know, one and two combination <clears throat> to move it forward. 
Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, again, it became a, a good combination, a good uh, uh, fortunate combination of uh, you know desire and uh, know-how and the will to put poker on TV and then get fueled by all the online sites. Right. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk more with Maury about uh, the current world of Poker Go, the new shows that have come out and sparked so much interest, in, including the high stakes poker world, and also his 2018 World uh, Poker Hall of Fame induction. When we return here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. 